All right, we're going. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this demo. Um, very excited to have you. I'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, we're going to get going here. We have about a half an hour. Uh, this is shorter, obviously, than um, my main presentation. This was a, a, a follow up or a uh, redo of the presentation I gave on uh, Tuesday. And so if you want the longer form that discusses uh, sort of some of the setup on the back end, and it just takes a little bit more time to go through it, uh, definitely go check out that one. Um, I would also just mention that um, I've been doing a lot of these demos. So Oracle Guide Learning, um, we've been doing demos for the last uh, year, but really in this uh, calendar year, it's really ramped up. Um, I've been doing tons and tons of demos for people. And that's what we do. Um, I have my uh, information here. If you are interested in a private demo for your organization, ping me, either email, phone, whatever. I will do a private demo for you and uh, be happy to do that and talk through what it would look like, even do quotes, the whole thing. So uh, that's me. I'm Cameron, I'm Vice President with Spear MC Consulting. Uh, we've been um, a primary sponsor here of the Reconnect Conference, and we're very happy to to be um, joined with Quest and uh, sponsoring this event. Um, we've been doing tons of presentations this week, so definitely check them out. Um, I have a background in PeopleSoft, been doing PeopleSoft for quite a long time, but I really enjoy learning the new technology, the emerging technology that we get to um, sort of support the core PeopleSoft users. So that means OCI chatbots, which I've done two other presentations this week on, as well as an Oracle Guided Learning. And obviously, Oracle Guided Learning is a very, very hot topic. Um, I'll skip uh, most of the stuff about SpearMC, but generally, we you know PeopleSoft is what we do. So I'm going to get right into it. We don't have a ton of time. Um, the digital adoption platform. So this, the whole premise here is that the when an organization that that has so, that rolls out software, and you are an organization that rolls out software, it just happens to be the Oracle creates that software, but you support that software. And you roll out new features, you roll out new palm images. There's always been this delicate balance between rolling out new features and getting your users to understand those features and to adopt those features. And so here you can see two screenshots of my, from my my cell phone, and that there when I recently upgraded my OS, there uh, was this sort of like new features that came out. So specifically in the weather app that you get daily weather on each of the days, that's new as of this latest OS change. Or in mail, um, you can actually do send later, which was never available on, on my phone previously. So you see these little overlays on top of the application that tells you, hey, tap here for more information. Or did you know that you can um, hold down the send button and you can send this later? It's not heavy handed. It's simply right in the, in the point of um, when you're doing a real thing, a real transaction, or in this case, looking up whether or send an email, that you can learn something new that's been rolled out as part of that, that a new feature. It's very simple. It's not a massive training uh, guide. It's simply, hey, did you know there's something new here? Just pay attention. And you can always X out and close out of that. The idea is that across the board here, there are digital adoption platforms that um, provide this capability that's basically no code software that integrates completely with your application in order to help a user learn that application. Or you're going to see today, guide be guided through a transaction in the world of PeopleSoft. So this is everywhere. You'll see this everywhere. If you start to pay attention, you'll see it on your TV. You'll see it on websites. You'll see it on your phone. You'll see it everywhere that there's applications and software that's coming out. So the concept is, can't PeopleSoft be that easy as well? We have things that are lurking right there that people never know about because they don't attend training classes. They don't read your training guides. So can't we just have a something simple like that for PeopleSoft? And the answer is yes, OGL will allow you to do that. Um, so or Oracle Guide Learning you know, provides real-time access within the application. Um, it's basically an overlay in PeopleSoft. It's not outside of PeopleSoft. It's not a copy of PeopleSoft or an image. It's really in PeopleSoft that you're actually going to be able to get this real-time instruction. That's gonna to lead to faster time to productivity. So either in a learning situation where you're just trying to train someone how to do something or a new feature, you're gonna teach them in the, in the actual flow of real work, and that's gonna help them learn a lot faster. It'll also then help people that need to learn the application on an ongoing basis, your core groups, your people who are doing in the application every day, 
maybe it's a new user, a new, uh, a new person in, let's say, an accounts payable group or a benefits administration group, and they need to know how to do their job. And so they can just run through these guides and learn how to do the process. So we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, the big key here with org guide learning is the level of analytics you get to see where you actually get to um, view what uh, people have actually run. So you as a training administrator, as a support administrator, you're rolling out these Oracle guides and it's actually, you can actually see who's running them and who's perhaps finishing the guide, who's not finishing the guide, it gives you sort of a level of analytics that says, how can we help people um, actually uh, do, do their work and the level of analytics. So I'm gonna show you all this stuff today. And uh, by the way, I posted my deck from Tuesday today in this session. So if you want the full deck, go ahead and get it. Lots of screenshots, lots of verbiage, but I'm gonna show you because I believe this thing is, if you see it, you'll believe. So seeing is believing here and I wanna just show you instead of just talking about it. So I'm gonna get over to uh, my web browser and come in here and what you'll notice here, let me uh, move my uh, little widget thing here away. Okay, so what you're looking at here is PeopleSoft Financials. And um, within this, uh, if you're not familiar with the Fluid interface, hopefully you are, but if you're not, all these tiles are this is just regular PeopleSoft and you've got your home pages and you got your tiles. Um, but a couple other things that are here that you may not have noticed or, or may not uh, know from your own organization, your, your own use of PeopleSoft. There's a widget right here, which we'll talk about. This is a library of all of my potential guides, okay? Um, so you can organize it however you want. You can create these display groups however you want. You can have, you know, welcome and general announcements. You can have uh, self-service for things that would be appropriate for anybody. And you can have perhaps some core things like uh, for, you know, core modules like AP guides, AR guides, purchasing guides. This is financials, but same thing would apply to HCM where you have payroll guides, benefits guides, uh, core HR, et cetera. So you can organize these guides however you want. Each one of these guides would then step you through a process to learn something, right? So this is a, a, a direct replacement of your training guides that are outside the system. It's a direct replacement of UPK scripts that potentially um, with UPK being deprecated as of this December and moving to sustained support, um, it might be a, a time for you to consider moving those UPK scripts into a, a model like this. So you can handle all of those guides, but you can do a whole lot more. So let me show you a couple of things. Um, in addition to some of the things I'm going to show you, you can group any of those guides into something called a task list where you say, hey, as a new user, I want you to be, go and run through these guides. OK, you can see that I've already run this guide. And as you do it, it'll mark it completed for you. Again, this just use cases a, a, a new user. But I could create a task list for anything. I could create a task list as part of um, open enrollment. You need to do three different things as part of open enrollment. And now I can bring that right into the application and ask you to, to, to follow these steps and go through the actual things to um, actually um, sign up for your open enrollment, for example. So I can do these task lists however I want. And like I said, as I um, uh, completed them, they will just be marked as completed. I'm going to reset this to show you that I can reset this at any point. As an administrator, I can choose to allow that to be reset or not. You have complete control of the experience here as an administrator. Lastly, so we talked about the widget, we talked about the task list. Um, lastly, you know, th those are great when a user knows that I need to pull information. I, I want to know how to approve a transaction. I, I want to know how um, such and such a thing works. I can go and pull that information. But as you can see here, I also have this little thing called a smart tip that I can associate with anything on the screen. And so here, if I'm, I'm looking at this and I didn't even know about that I could pull information, I would just perhaps as a user see this thing, I'd hover over it and it pops up a message to me and says, hey, you know, pro tip, do you know how to use the search bar? Uh, did you know that you could search for suppliers and vouchers? Did you know that you, you know, do you, do you know how to find that hard to find item? Click here to learn more. So I'm offering this sort of in the flow of work we're offering this way to learn more about some of the features. I did. The, I wrote this one specifically for, for search because what I find is a lot of people roll out Elasticsearch, but people are so attuned of using their menu, they don't necessarily really utilize search. And there's been some really great advancements in, in search. So how do we really, you know, how do we get our users to actually use search effectively? So I wrote this guide to, to show as an example that, that, uh, that you can, um, teach people how to do that. So for example, I say, okay, yeah, sure. I'm a user. 
I, uh, I'm interested in learning this. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. So I'll click here. It now says, okay, understanding search. This guide's gonna show you how to effectively use search. So it's a nice little header. Um, it's got our logo on it, click next to begin. And now it walks me through. The search bar allows you to search for menu items, the default, or to find content with the different business process areas. Click on the menu drop down to see the different areas of content. Now I notice that there's no next here because it's telling me to go and do this thing, right? So I click on menu and it notices that I did the thing that I told it to do. And so it's gonna progress to the next step in this, in this guide. Here it says for AP content, click on AP, go ahead and try it out. And I've got this nice beacon sort of drawing my attention right here. You notice that it actually scrolled me down a little bit because it knows how to do that. It knows how to scroll you down. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on AP and it says, okay, now go ahead and search for something like, uh, in this case, mid 10. So I'm gonna come up here and say, okay, I'm learning as I'm going. Okay, oh, I can search for something like the part of a name of a, of a supplier, for example. Okay, fine. So I typed in mid 10. And now it brings up all the vouchers and payments associated with Minted. So I'm actually learning this as I go. So I say, I say next, it tells me, hey, look at this. Um, and let me move that down. Search results will display. Okay, great. I'm seeing that there's vouchers and, and, and payments. I click on next net for now. Go ahead and switch back to menu. I switch back to menu. I click next. And it's just walking me through. So now I try to do voucher. So I type in voucher. And now it's taking me and showing me that, hey, take a look. Now, if you type in voucher when you're on the menu, it's actually searching through the menu and it's gonna tell you that this is actually the voucher screen. It knows that regular entry is your voucher screen and it's gonna take you that. So now I'm teaching somebody, they don't actually need to use the menu anymore. They could just go right in here, type in part of the word, it'll bring them right to the menu item. I click on that and I take that three or four step process to get to that menu item and I teach right here. So I'm, I'm teaching them as they go, right? And that, that concludes the, the guide. And now I have this nice little sort of um, feedback loop on the back end for the people who are doing these OGL guides to say, yeah, this guide, yeah, it worked well for me, you know, but uh, you know, I, I wish uh, that this covered um, um, AR information, you know, for example, and I can submit that. And so now that goes back into the analytics and the person that's now running and supporting all the OGL guides can see that and say, you know, a lot of people have been asking for AR content. Let's add a couple steps in here to show them how they can search for AR content. That's going to be a little bit different than the AP content. So we'll just go ahead and add that to that, to that step. So um, all of that is uh, now completed. That would be marked on the back end that I completed that guide in my task list. Now you can even see that that will be marked as completed and I can just keep moving. So all of these guides uh, are, are written however you want to write them. When you buy OGL, you get a blank slate. Oh, and it tells me that uh, I haven't done anything in here. So it's about to um, kick me out. Um, so Anything that you're anything you're seeing here is stuff that we've written as demonstration. We're also um, one of the things that uh, we have and mentions in the deck is that we're also starting. We have a starter kit that we will provide for you if you would like to purchase that as part of the purchase of your OGL um, to actually buy a starter kit of all the guides. Um, for example, employee self service guides, modular guides, etc. And those guides, um, employee self service guides, for example, work in financials. They would be tailored also in HCM. Um, we'll have campus guides. All of that will be part of what our starter kit and what we'll be what we um, will have available to you to to buy. So um, back to this. So as part of these guides, every guide will have a, what's called a step guide. So if you see this little arrow next to these guides, I can click on this, and what's going to do is actually going to show me a visual of all the steps. This is a replacement for what you might remember from UPK seeing kind of a print it or see it without actually um, going and doing it, right? So here you can see all the steps here. I can, I can go through, I can see the image of what, what was in that step with the, the um, uh, content or, or, or um, little message that popped up in that step. So I can actually just see this all the way throughout. And you'll notice that there's this print button, email button. I could print out this into a paper-based guide if I wanted to. I can email this guide out to somebody and you know, send it to such, such, such and such person and say, hey, here's this guide on running search. You don't have to actually log into PeopleSoft. You can just look at this and just see what happens in this guide. That really helps in a help desk format where you've got an IT help desk, for example, that doesn't really know 
how to do things in PeopleSoft, but perhaps they just know how to point people to a step guide and then they can just watch that guide and say, oh yeah, okay, thank you. And so you can actually um, create a more sustainable model where you're just perhaps giving them access to look at how these things work in PeopleSoft without actually having to go in and actually do it. Now, of course, you do have the ability, of course, to do this in PeopleSoft as well, but the step guides are a way for you to actually just send this out to somebody. And then lastly, you can see here at the top, you actually have a, a video as well um, that shows you how to do this. Um, and so watching the video will actually show you actually do it, um, do the actual process. And so somebody can actually watch it as well. So you have all those features, a part of the step guides, the print it, the email it, the see it, the watch it, you know, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So that's the step guide and step guides you can turn on or turn off. Um, they're direct. You don't have to do any additional work for those step guides. Once you create that guide, it will actually just be there available. The step guide will be available. If you turn that on, turn that feature on, I want a step guide and it will just create it for you. The video will be created for you on, on your behalf. And uh, as part of creating your guides, all of that um, just happens as part of it. Okay, so we talked about um, you know, running a process and um, each of these processes will take you through different things. Um, let me show you another one, for example, uh, query administration, something that um, a lot of people don't know about, that maybe know a lot about PeopleSoft Query, but don't know about query administration. So um, let's say I'm in here and I just want to, you know, understand more about query, build query, run a query, query administration. Yeah, I'll go ahead and run the query administration one. And so as you see here, it's going to now take me in and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do query administration. Um, click next. So you're going to click on the nav bar. It's going to walk me through in the menu. It's going to scroll me down automatically right to the spot I need to go to. Eventually utilities, administration, and query administration. Now I could have written this guide, this, this understand query administration. I could have written this guide to run through the, men, the, the search bar too, right? I could have just said, you know, instead of asking people to go through the menu to find this thing, I could have just said, hey, take them to the search bar, type in query administration, click on the query administration, and then I'm, I'm, I'm up and running. And that's a great thing about our starter kit is that um, all of the, the starter kit of all the guides that I'm showing you today would be available to purchase. What you can do then is you can dissect it and say, you know what, I don't want to take them through the menu. I'm gonna eliminate those menu steps. I'm gonna put a step that takes them through the Elasticsearch search bar. That's very easy to do. That's the idea of a starter kit. So it's there for you, ready to go. You can change the language on these steps. You can add your logos. You can do anything, but you don't have to write it from scratch. You're just basically adding to what you what you see from our starters, starter set. So um, it's going to now navigate me to the create administration. It tells me a little bit about it. You know, click next to learn about the new features. And now it just says, hey, you know, predefined searches are, um, are an expedited approach to find queries. Um, click next. You'll notice it keeps walking me through. Alternatively, an administrator can search for a specific query. And so I'm teaching somebody about query administration. You'll notice that there were differences with sometimes the message popped up and everything was grayed out behind it. And sometimes I'm just like, in this case, everything is not grayed out. I still could do anything in here. You see, everything is kind of reacting to me, but I've just put a border around where I'm trying to draw your attention. Those are simply check boxes when you set up these guides on each step. Do I want to gray everything out? Do I want to draw their attention to a specific place? Do I want the beacon to pop up? Do I want this to be completely disconnected where it's just a message right in the middle of the screen or maybe down the lower right part of the screen? You have full flexibility with how you set up those individual guides. So I'm clicking next. It says once you do that, click on search and you can find it. So click on search. And uh, I think something happened with my step. I should have a next step here. I, I apologize for our demo. Uh, environment is also our uh, dev environment where we're doing things. So it's like we, I may have, uh, my, my people may have taken away the next button on this. That's okay. So uh, bottom line is um, as you go through, and yeah, it looks like I'm not going to be able to keep going with that, that guide, unfortunately. Um, but it would walk me through, it takes me through that, tells me about executing and setting. So that guide is, you know, it's supposed to, supposed to be that, but it is a development environment. So I apologize. It looks like somebody messed with that in the back end. 
Um, so uh, that actually would be represented in analytics on an OGL that I did not actually complete that guide. And that would be logged to say Cameron McClurg went in here and didn't complete that guide. That would indicate that maybe there's an issue with the guide or perhaps the um, at me as a user, I just kind of, my level of engagement was low and I didn't complete the actual guide. All that can be seen on the back end in analytics. Okay, so um, bottom line is um, when you buy this, you buy it, you get the, the ability to write these guides, but you don't actually have any guides, okay? So that's where our starter kit can come into play. You can, we can sell that as part of, our, part of the purchase of OGL. Um, by the way, OGL is uh, sold as a, a resale. Oracle's not selling this directly. So um, we, as a reseller, um, are the ones that you would come and work with to buy this for specifically for PeopleSoft. Um, and then as part of that, we can either help you with implementation services or not, just help, just sell it to you guys. You guys buy it and then go and, and if, whether you want a starter kit or not, you guys go and do it yourself. When you buy from us, for OGL for PeopleSoft, it comes with the installation. So you get we get this working for you, um, along with we build two guides for you. Um, and you can pick the guides or you can pick from one of the guides that we have um, already. And then we um, uh, do a training workshop where we're showing you how to do everything you're seeing here, all the, how to build the guides and all that kind of stuff. That comes with our uh, sale of, um, of OGL. So really quickly, I'll just sort of jump over. We just got a couple minutes left. Um, this is the OGL product itself. So OGL is a SaaS product. So you, when you when you buy OGL, you get the SaaS product, but it's connected to your PeopleSoft on-prem. If your PeopleSoft is on Azure, AWS, or OCI, it doesn't matter where your PeopleSoft exists. Um, even if it's on-prem, it's fine, but the OGL product is essentially a SaaS product. So you're subscribing to OGL. It's a three-year subscription. That's a standard term for OGL. And, um, and this is what you get. And again, it's a blank slate where you start to create content. I'll show you just really quickly. Um, I'll show you the one that we were just looking at, that search one. And I'll show you how easy it is to come in here. And let me close this one right here and uh, click on this editor. And what's gonna do, it's gonna launch me right into PeopleSoft. And I'll, I'll be in PeopleSoft and I'll have this nice uh, toolbar on my left side, which I can move to the right side if I want to. But I can see now all my steps that go through this process. So here's my first step that you saw before. On my second step, it's showing me on this. And I'll show you just really quickly how easy it is on settings to just change the behavior, for example. I could un take this from border and overlay so everything's grayed out. I could take take it just border and now see everything's not grayed out. That was simply a checkbox or a drop down here that I can choose how that, that would work. Of course, I can change all the, the, the content in here. I have full flexibility with fonts. I can put links in here. Links can be to external sites or an internet site, or it can be a link to another guide. So like you saw at the beginning when I said, hey, did you know you can do this? Click here to begin the process to learn it. That was linking from one guide to another guide or one splash tip, smart tip to an actual process guide. So you do all that within here. All this stuff, how wide I want this message, where I want the message to show up, um, what is activating if, if they actually click on the thing, I want them to advance to the next step. All of this is just simply check boxes in this tool when I go into this, into this guide. And we will show you how to do all that when you buy from us and we show you, you know, all the stuff in the training workshop. Okay, so very easy to, to create these steps. You just link additional steps. Again, if you buy um, our starter kit, you, you, you get all this stuff and you just go in and just add additional step. You change the language. On here, you change this logo for your logo. It's, very, it's gonna be very, very easy to start up and just um, um, start with our starter kit and just add additional steps to it. But pretty much how everything works and how you move through, it's all basically right there in a template format for you. Um, you can even copy this guide and, and take it to another one. Let's say, for example, you have one that's navigating through the menu to uh, query administration. You copy that and, and take it to another page. And all you're doing is just, is, is, is just modifying some of the steps in there to take it to a different spot in the menu. Okay, I am going to leave. I'm going to stop there. And I didn't even talk about analytics. It's in here. And you can see, like, I'll just quick, quickly come in here. You can see feedback. Um, across all my different environments and you can get feedback 
you can, um, so who's running them, what's the feedback, what's the ratings, I can get down to a specific user, I can look at activity and show, you know, which, which guides are being run, when they're being run, the time frame, which ones are the most popular, which ones are, um, you know, people are, have low level of engagement or maybe not completing. I'm not going to get into all this stuff, but this is just out of the box. It's just there for you, ready to use. Um, and uh, it's a um, really robust set of features. And again, because it is a SaaS, you do get new features every couple of months. It's rolling out continuing new features, new options for analytics, et cetera. It's just going to be all baked in there. Okay. If you have a question, please. Okay. I see some questions. All right. Uh, so we got about five minutes left. So it, Paula Dawson, is OGL a delivery people stock product or is it a component that must be purchased? OGL is a purchase, so it's going to purchase through, um, through us, but it's an OU or Oracle University purchase. It's a SaaS application, meaning you're going to subscribe to it and it's going to then be set up to be used for PeopleSoft. When you buy Oracle Guided Learning, um, you get three applications. Now, it's really important to point out that all of PeopleSoft is one application. So if you have PeopleSoft Financials, HCM, even Campus, all of that counts as one application and you get two more. Those other applications, as long as they're HTML based, this OGL product, this guided learning product will actually help you uh, or, or, or can uh, be used for other non-Oracle applications. Uh, where's OGL training material stored? UPK requires a separate server. No server, no install on, on prem. There is a connection that takes place between your PeopleSoft and this SaaS application. So all your guides are here in the SaaS application. No additional servers, nothing needed on prem. This is a this is a subscribed software that you're building your content. You can see that I have my different environments here that I can go into and build, build content. So it's stored. On um, it's stored actually in, in, in the SaaS application. Oh, how do we get back to? Uh, oh, sorry, right here. How much it costs? Great question. Talk to me uh, offline, and I will get you a quote. It'll be based on how many employees you have. That's basically how the metrics work. And you can actually see I have a, de a slide on in, in my deck that tells the drivers to the cost for you. It'll be mostly based on how many employees you have. And again, once you tell me that. We can give you a quote. We'll ask you how many applications do you plan to use it for? As long as it's under three, you're going to get that one block pricing for what that's going to cost. Um, again, you get it for additional non PeopleSoft applications as well. And so ping me if you want a quote on this. We're, we're, we're throwing out a lot of quotes these days. A lot of people want to want this tool. Are these secured based on roles? The guides, um, when I let me go back in there, there is a way to link what shows up in your training library based on PeopleSoft roles, but we don't think that's the best model. What we think and what we, and so for example, you can look in here and see that I've got AP guides, AR guides, person guides. Um, is there a way to say that if I have an AP role in PeopleSoft, only see the AP guides? Yes, there is, but we think that's going to be um, non-sustainable, very, very difficult for you to actually manage that way. What we would suggest is that once you go to certain pages, for example, um, the uh, payables operations, for example, once you click on payables operations, I can control what guides are available on that page versus this main page. So if I click on payables operations, or for example, let me go to ePro. One thing I didn't mention, I'll show you this really quickly. I can actually push information to people. So here you notice that I didn't have to pull this information. I went to ePro, it automatically greeted me with this. And so in the same way that I can control what messages show up on which pages, I can also control what shows up in the library on those pages. And that's a way to do it and basically kind of get around this whole issue of tying specific guides to a role. You can basically tie it to pages. And so when people can go to that page, whether it's a home page or a specific page, only guides show up there at that moment. And so um, that's a really important uh, thing to point out. And I'm sorry that I'm going so fast through this, but and normally I have a longer uh, form for this. Um, all right. If the subscription is not renewed, is the custom content lost? Uh, well, that is unfortunately reality with a SaaS is that uh, you do have to pay for it and nobody likes it. Um, that's, that's the new world. I had used, used to have Quicken online or Quicken uh, installed on my computer. And once I went to the SaaS version of Quicken, 
I can't get access to my data unless I keep paying for the subscription. That's that's the reality. I hate it, but that's sort of how it works, um, unfortunately. All right, thank you, especially for ESS. We don't want any admin related content shown for them. Yep, that's exactly how it works. So on employee self service, you'd only have it available for employee type of stuff, but you know your APAR stuff that would show up on on subsequent areas for for that. Um, we're at the end of our time. Um, that was drinking through the fire hose. I totally get it. Normally I get it take an hour and go through all this content. There's lots of other things I could show you, like how do you um, link this to an actual process? So instead of just training or sort of nice to know stuff, how do you actually guide somebody through a process that may or may not want to actually learn and memorize that process? Uh, they can do that. So things like uncommon or infrequently used um, things like somebody comes in once a year to open enrollment you just guide them through that process versus just trying to train them on it so it's really a guided processing tool in addition to guided learning um, so all those things i can show you in a, in a private demo if you want me to do that so ping me um, offline here is my information check out the deck request a demo there's my information right there um, definitely ping me through email or give me a phone call and uh, we can do this private demo for you. We can talk numbers if you want interested in this, want to get a ballpark for what this is going to cost you um, and what it will take internally to do this under your own, uh, your own efforts. I can definitely help you with all that. And I'm going to be respectful of your time. So we're at the end of our time now and uh, we're going to, we're going to stop, I'm going to stop sharing. Ping me if you want more information. I would love to, uh, to do a private session for you guys. Thank you for coming and um, have a great uh, rest of the conference.